One reason is that uh, scientific studies have shown that even though it's hard to delete your accounts, when you do, you get happier, you get more productive, you have more time. But that might be the least of the reasons. When a lot of people do, their society becomes better, it becomes more peaceful. What's amazing is that just this one technology seems to have made every layer of life worse. In the uh, business models for companies like Facebook and Twitter, but also I have to say for Google, the the only product that they make money from, essentially, is the ability to persuade and change the behaviors of their users. You're not the customer of these things. The customer is the advertiser off to the side, and the advertiser believes that they're able to gain some kind of modification in what you do, what you think. And it's sneaky. It, you don't understand all that's being done to you. Very strange behavior modification algorithms are being applied, and all this data that's being taken is what feeds those algorithms. The problem with this is is that if you have a society where anytime two people do something together, the only way that's financed is because of a third person who wants to manipulate them, you end up with an entire society optimized for manipulation, for sneakiness, for trickiness. And so what you do is you open it up to all kinds of bad actors to come in and create divisions, ruin elections, uh, make politics insane. And uh, I have to say, we've seen so many examples of that that it's crazy to deny it anymore. If if you ask, how did an organization like ISIS become so powerful so quickly? Well, it's because the social media technology is designed to amplify exactly the worst people. If you ask, why is violence returning to areas that had been gradually becoming more peaceful in rural India and Southeast Asia and parts of Africa? Once again, we see the same phenomenon. Social media arrives and then the violence follows. And uh, <laughs> there are just too, there are too many examples mm -hmm. to give. I think it's, it, so, so the, the thing is though that people are genuinely addicted. The addiction is technically very similar to gambling addiction. When somebody becomes addicted to gambling, they don't want to believe it. They think they're in control, but they're not. And so since everybody's addicted to this stuff, when you talk to them about it, it's very hard for them to understand because they're addicted. It's essentially a form of being hypnotized. Right. It's a very strange situation. The first president of Facebook, somebody named Sean Parker, now says that they understood they were intentionally doing something bad. But the thing is, I knew him at the time when Facebook was starting and he was the president of it. And I really believe they didn't understand it and it was good intentions gone bad and so this leaves me with a mystery is he remembering himself as being more of an evil James Bond villain kind of a person because it's glamorous I, I really it's very hard to figure that out I'm very confident that Jack Dorsey and the other people at Twitter did not realize they were doing something bad and they were caught by surprise and now are having trouble figuring out what to do and I think they're sincere um, I also feel that's true about the Google people who I knew and I actually sold a company to them when they were just starting, I believe that they did not understand the depth of the mistake they were making. I'm not sure if anybody fully did. But in the case of Facebook, maybe they did. At least some of them say they did. The thing is that people aren't aware of most of what happens. Your immediate experience of using these tools might be quite positive. And indeed, um, from my perspective, this ability to connect with friends and all that sort of thing is just intrinsic to the internet. That's what, that's all good and that's all authentic. The main thing that goes on that I'm concerned about is something that you are by design not aware of, which is the modification of your own behavior, because it happens very sneakily and very subtly using the techniques of what's called behaviorism, a branch of science that studies how to change the behavior of organisms uh, like people. <laughs> uh, so, you know, what this is analogous to for me is in the past, society has faced problems where there was mass addiction. And even though everybody was addicted and even though it was hard, we somehow were able to face up to it. And a very obvious example to me is cigarette smoking, which is greatly reduced, even though everybody used to smoke all the time everywhere. Another example is uh, alcohol. Uh, we've had a campaign in uh, most of the world to prevent people at least from driving drunk because it used to kill so many people and actually that's work. I think in the same way when we start to have a wider realization of how troublesome these things are, not only will some people leave, but when those people leave, they'll create the space in the society for conversation. And I'm fully confident that these services will improve eventually, and they'll improve enough that I won't feel you need to delete them anymore. <laughs> but right now, it really is important for the health of society for people to become aware of the degradation.
degradation that's going on. Even if only a minority of people become skeptics of the social media technologies and delete their accounts, that minority is enough to have the conversation. If absolutely every single person in a society is a drunk, it's going to be impossible to have a conversation about the problems of alcoholism. Mm -hmm. There has to be somebody who's sober <laughs> in order to even start that conversation. Th this seems to me to be simple logic. In this case, there has to be just some subset, some minority of people who are not addicted to these technologies, and then we can have a conversation, and out of that conversation will come better technologies and a more moderate and survivable form of them. In the book, I'm very clear, and I repeat it many times, I don't know you, and for an individual, it might be that keeping their social media accounts is the right idea or whatever. It's not my job to judge individuals, but it is your job to know yourself. It well, is your job to experience yourself without addiction. It is your job to make judgments, so I have to leave it to you.